YouTubers, Mike Martin's here. Mike Martin's channel. Welcome to another very special and beautiful edition and original and teleprompter free coming to you live from Merritt, BC. Trends in the housing wall. No, housing crisis section of my channel. The trends in the housing market's coming back. Here's my green screen. I'm going to set up my office here uh, in my house to uh, properly deliver messages in a very professional, I'll even wear a tie too. Anyways, this is a good one. This is a good one. And this is what I've been predicting for years. If you've been following me for years, thank you and God bless you. Okay, here it goes. The housing bubble has burst. Economists warn market imbalances are a threat to the economy in the long run. February 10th, 2017 by Gary Marr. Housing helped keep the economy humming in 2016 while oil, oil prices lagged. Remember when I talked about diverse, being a country being diverse, right? And not depending on uh, oil dependent or housing dependent, anyways. But an economist warns that long-term dependence on real estate is a crisis in the market, Bloomberg. Those booming housing markets may make some homeowners rich and provide short-term boost to the economy, but a Canadian economist is warning about the long-term impact on the country. David Madani of Capital Economics said in a report on Friday that while the housing boom supported the economy through oil shock in 2016, a further deterioration of housing affordability will cost the economy over time. Uh-oh. The abrupt slowdown in Vancouver's housing market serves a warning shot. As things stand now, the performance of the economy this year could hinge on the direction of, of the much larger overheated Toronto housing market, Madani writes. The report notes Vancouver home sales have plummeted 40% percent 40 points 40 percent for all you bookies out there listening to this it plummeted 40 points over the last 12 months despite mortgage rates remaining very low house prices are also beginning to drop no shit sherlock contrary to the controversial wisdom there hasn't been any macronomic catalyst or trigger for this abrupt slowdown the new provincial foreign buyers tax also has a little to do with this. Really? A little? The report states, referring to an additional 15% foreign property transfer tax, the, provincial, uh, the province brought in for August 2016. Remember that article? If you've been following me, you know. And if you don't, tough luck. The foreign buyer tax announced by the British Columbian government in July doesn't tell the full story either. We simply think that the housing bubble has burst. Housing bubbles, housing bubbles are, of course, inherently unstable because they are largely driven by unpredictable investor mania. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Madani, Madani says gains in Toronto continued to be fueled by losing credit standards and points to research from the Bank of Canada. Says the, the, the size of average home loans have ballooned as to a proportion of household income which he says makes the mortgage lending increasing riskier. So the typical Canadian with a typical job working his arse off and two household incomes coming in, it's too risky now. Why? Because you're buying in too late. The largest banks are now being strongly advised, OSFI, the federal banking regulator to bolster <coughs> their working capital base for their own protection. Right, Mandani? Overall, while the investment boom is, how, uh, is in housing, supported the economy through the oil shock. The further deterioration in the housing affordability and greater housing imbalances are worrisome. Sym sympto symptomatic of an econ uh, economic crisis in making caused by investor speculation and excessive financial leverage. So if you're on one of those... Um, 
what do you call those things? Those uh, variable rate mortgages. I, I really, 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 I mean, I'm not, I'm not licensed to give advice, but I'd be really worried if I was on one. I would seek financial advice uh, because it looks like they're going to start, once the economy is hinged on housing, a good, like a major percentage. I'm not sure how big the percentage is, but I know it's big. I know we're hinged on um, oil for a long time. And then oil went from 110 to Twenty dollar, one hundred twenty a barrel to like forty bucks. So and it costs eighty bucks to produce. So the profit, the pro, the margins just weren't there. So now, I mean, instead of hinging our economy on production, a true country's economy is based off production and exports. So if the country, the country basically employs people to work, they work, they get paid, they pay taxes, right? They pay their taxes. Then you have them gaining a wage and them putting the money back into the economy. And whatever they're making or building in a factory gets, or, or in a laboratory or wherever they're working, assembly line, gets shipped off to other countries and the, the country just makes hand over fist. Not depending on oil. Dependence on oil is, is look what happened to Venezuela. Dependence on, on, on housing. Look what happened to the States in 2007 and 2008 with Bernie Mac and Fannie Mae and all that stuff. Everybody knows. I mean, I'm just putting out there what I think is happening. The crash has happened. I said we're going to have a mini crash in March, springtime, and the, the actual crash in, in, in summer. The actual crash is going to be more of the condos falling. So in the spring, I see the deta detached houses falling, and then chasing behind would be the condos. I just have a feeling. I mean, I'm just looking at the trends in the housing market and where they're going. This is where it's going. And a lot of people ask me, oh, you know, how do you, how are you sure? How do you, it's not, you know, sure. It's reading a story and following the plot, you kind of have an idea where the story is going to twist, unless it's an Albert Hitchcock movie, which is a different story. But when you're watching and you got the plot, you got, oh, I get it, he's going to save the girl, is that, that's the same thing in the housing market. It's a trend. You see it. I, I mean, I'm not really big in housing. I'm not really big in real estate. I'm not really big in, um... Uh, 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 the whole real estate thing. And I'll tell you why. Because for me, housing is and always would be a place to, to set roots and then set up shop. Set up shop means start setting up, set up business. doesn't have to necessarily be a home business, but a place to operate, sleep, eat, and then set up shop as in going out and doing your big lucrative. There's a sea, a sea of money to be made out there. Seas of money to be made out there. But unfortunately, especially with the economy going down, that's how you start taking advantage and finding, not loopholes, but finding weaknesses in the economy to, make, to, to, to leverage and make real money. Not freaking real estate. Real estate is, 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 is the, um, the safest way, in quotations, to, to grow your money. Some people have made big. But the problem is, many have lost, right? Remember, for every dollar you make, someone owes a dollar somewhere. So don't forget that. Anyways, guys, this is what the housing crisis is looking like. I mean, a blind man could see it coming. Let me know what you guys think. Comment below. I'd like to know your uh, thoughts and views about this. Commenting on the video makes a lot, means a lot to me. If you want to comment on things that have nothing to do or trash my family and crap like that, Nobody likes you. You have no friends. Uh, somebody that goes and trashes somebody online is like beating up a blind person. Nobody likes you. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Comment below. Thanks for watching. Bye.